So yeah, welcome to a brand new podcast, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Carl Maloney, the host of The Shindig, here in my little booth in Manchester, and today we have a special guest, Kelly Monroe from End of the Trail Creative. Morning, mate. Hello, mate. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. I really, really enjoyed catching up with you down at Party in the Pews in Macclesfield, that festival in the church. A yes, few we, had a, we had a good laugh. I think we might have had a couple of refreshments, yeah. whatever whatever yeah. they may be. I think probably a coffee. We'll have a coffee at yeah. two that yeah, was kind we, of all it was a nice, a nice yeah. afternoon of live music just before Peter Up were on, weren't they? And uh, yeah. and you were supporting a band called Hollows there, which I really enjoyed as well. Yeah, they're a band because I've got End of the Trail Creative, which is like management side, and yeah. I've got End of the Trail Records, which is the, rec- the record label side, and I've been putting the records out. But yeah, they weirdly got to support Peter Hook, and I'm a, I'm a lifelong um, New Order fan, like a really, yeah. really big New Order yeah. fan, not just in, in size and everything. You know, I'm just a big... Mm. Big New Order fan, but um, yeah, I couldn't give up the chance to go and see. In my mind, I thought, oh, you know what, we'll hang about with Hooky and we'll have a, you know, become lifelong pals. Turns out, <laughs> yes. you know, that doesn't happen really backstage. <laughs> Every, everyone, everyone kind of goes, um, um, no, 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 he's not here. Oh no, 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 please, we're busy, we're busy. Can you? And you kind of, you know, but yeah, I mean, I've, I've knew, loved New Order since the year uh, dot. So yeah. it was good. And I was, even though he played more Joy Division songs, I was kind of really, really hoping he would play some new award that he did at the end. Yeah. But um, yeah, brilliant. It was, it, was, it was so good. And to have one of my bands kind of support support him, that, that, yeah. that's, that's, that's amazing, you know? Yeah. Well, I, I can remember you in Sheffield years and years and years ago. I think you put my band on a few times, like mm. many, many years ago. So to, for people that aren't aware of what you do, Kelly, Introduce us to what you do, your musical history and that kind of stuff. Just give us a bit of background on yourself. Yeah, I mean, um, like yourself, I like everybody. I used to play the band years and years ago. Um, did that until I was about, oh, God, I don't know how old I was. Maybe I was about 35 and um, yeah. went on a world trip um, and decided to move from the band thing into kind of the record label thing um, and come up with the name End of the Trail, which is kind of a homage to the um, the Surf's Up album by the Beach Boys. There's a statue on there called End of the Trail, which is, um, it's all about the fallen um, Indian. Et but anyway, that's kind of boring, that bit. But yeah, okay. started putting records out, did that for quite a while, and then moved into the management side, because in the management side, you get to work with more people, and you get to, you get to see how people play, uh, sorry, play, get to work differently. And I, even though I still have End of the Trail records, and the trail creative, the management side is much more interesting because you know you'll pick up tips from people. You'll work yeah. with that record label or that record label, and you'll go, "All right, they do that that way, and they do that that way," and it all kind of helps you, or it helps me. It doesn't help you, it helps me, but it all helps me to when I find a new artist, I kind of now have a really good, good idea of like how I can get that band a deal in an ideal yeah. world. In an ideal world, you know, we'll just go that 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 and that. And we've got your deal. Happens sometimes. It does happen. It doesn't happen all the time, of course. But yeah, so that's kind of what I do. Is um, now I manage bands. I still do the record label side um, a little bit. But as I say, I find that you know if you can get a band on any kind of label, you can I can pool my resources and their resources. So we can we can kind of double up on. I can put the records on my own, but I like to work with other people because you can just get more done. You can, as I say, you know sometimes if I sign a band to. Um, Cook vinyl about three years ago, and suddenly you're speaking to their team in New York and their team in America and their team, and you know, that's great. It's good when you're able to kind of bounce off people. So, yeah, I mean, sorry, that was a really long answer, but yeah, I mean, essentially, I manage bands and I'm always kind of looking for bands all the time. Even to this weekend, I'm away up to God's Own Country, Newcastle, to a festival called Stone's Throw, mm. where I'm just going to walk around and see if there's anyone. Yeah. That's good, you know, and um, and you know, if any any Geordies want a Geordie manager, I'm sure they don't. So you know, we'll we'll kind of <laughs> see what happens up there. But yeah, um, yeah, just that's kind of what I do. I, I, try, I get bands record deals, you know. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. I do a large majority of the time. Record deals can vary, you know. They can be massive, they can be tiny. But yeah, it's um, yeah, essentially that's what I try and do. I pick up an act, yeah. and try and push them in the direction that makes people interested in them. That's what you're trying to do as a so, manager. So before you got into this business and the music industry, so you're well into the, like the nitty gritty of it all where I'm, uh, the, the, the media side of it, really, I've kind of fell into this side of it, which I, I proper love, but before you got into the business side of it and, you know, putting bands on, what were you, what got you into music in the first place? Let's go back a bit. Well, I used to be in a band. I wasn't a band in Newcastle. Um, yeah. 
who were, who were, I mean, they were big in New York. This is before Sam Fender, before the internet. So there was like nothing in kind of, there was stuff in, you know, I mean, I think the biggest band, you know, um, Lindisfarne were, were our heroes and Sting was a god, you know, kind of that kind of. So so we talked about like um, late 80s when I started playing, when I was about um, 18, 19. But yeah, I got into a band and were quickly become like one of the biggest bands in Newcastle. And, you know, there wasn't no bands, there was quite a few. You know, it ended up like people like Dubstar got signed and they were our pals back in the day um but yeah i started them started doing the band thing and I, I just found that you know i was the guy in the band who was like pushing and you know trying to get stuff done and that's kind of i guess that's what a manager does you know so we we did a lot of good things with the band i think we supported blur which was cool well to an extent until they did the hokey cokey which i wasn't impressed with did you, did, you, did you nick his jacket Somebody nicked their jacket. Well, don't put me yeah. on the spot. It's actually it's actually in the Riverside book who pinched his jacket, if you want well, to go back. Right. Actually, don't look at what it says about me in the Riverside book. <laughs> it's, um, we can't let my uh, mother-in-law read what it says about me in the Riverside okay. book because it's all, so it's all bad. Um, but good, good, if you want a good time. You know what I mean. <laughs> yes. um, But yeah, so we, we, I mean, so we've done a band in Newcastle for about, seven or eight years and weirdly the people i was in the band with the drummer ended up playing on a who album the singer ended up being frank turner's agent we all kind of went on from being in the band moving we moved down to london eventually because we've got a record deal down there um and we've all stayed in the music industry bar one but mm. everybody in the band was and that's weird that the drummer ended up he ended up playing on a bunch of um demos that pete townsend had that keith moon hadn't played on because he because he died so um, weirdly, I think it's a story is that Zach Stark, he was on tour with Oasis and my mate who used to be in my band, he, um, he was playing with Pete Townsend's wife. Mm-hmm. And so he got the gig to play on the on the Who's, on the Who's. But that same drummer, I must mention that um, it, when tape that split up, they didn't just break the hearts of a million like teenage girls. Yep. Mark Owen actually stole my drummer. Yeah, okay. I, I can remember he turned up to rehearsal. God, so what, what are we talking about? Yeah, is it, I don't know. Is it 97 when to take that spit up? I don't know. But he came in the rehearsal room and said, I'll, I'll just check, I'll just check my tattoo when did yeah, they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I love, I love Robbie. But um, yeah, so he, he actually came in the rehearsal room and said, I'm leaving the band. I'm going on tour with Mark Bowen around the world. And I was like, don't leave our crappy indie band. Are you okay? <laughs> what are you doing? But I was still, I'm still friends with all the people in the band. We'll meet up every year. And as I say, weirdly, a lot of them have went to kind of do quite well in mm. the music industry. I don't know what that says. It just might say that we're just kind of all pig-headed and we didn't want to leave the music industry. But yeah, did that for ages in the band. And I started writing the songs in the band. Weirdly, it come, I was playing the bass, but it just kind of come... I remember we got Food Records. Um, God bless Andy Ross, who's just passed away. But this is before I knew Andy Ross. Our manager knew the Food Record guys and they give us, de- us some demo time. Mm. in Camden of course and then I remember us going in to write some to, to demo some songs and we literally only had the music and I had to go home that night and write all the words and bring them in the next day mm. and those were the songs but we did quite well because we had a girl lead singer and we did we, we did all right but um I mean listening back to it now it's still pretty good but because I'm a manager now you kind of see it through the manager's eyes and maybe it wasn't as good as we thought it was but you know what we were like 24 25 and the whole thing about moving down to london was like huge because like i say pre-internet you yeah. didn't know all you all you knew was that everything was happening in london and we're in newcastle where you want to get down there there's there's loads happening there we never we heard about people saying record label people in gigs but we didn't believe yeah. them yeah. you know we never we never seen that but um yeah so I did the I did the band thing for quite a while. I didn't stay in bands until I was about thirty five. Uh, but what, yeah. what's interesting, what you said there is like like you were like a like you had your head screwed on on the business side of it when you were in the band. And and I speak to a lot of bands these days that the the, the bands that really crack on and make it are when there's three or four members or five members of the band when they're all on it and they're all working hard together. But you still do see bands these days where there's just one of them that does all the hard work and the leg work and the other ones don't even say anything. It's just, it's a weird dynamic in a band that, but I, I bought the majority of bands are like it in my, um, well, it's, it's hard that. because yeah, you know, I, cause what happens to me a lot of times is when I take over a band as a manager, 
mm. I'm kind of taking over that one or two people in the band who were in charge. It's yeah. something's gonna be a little, it'll be a little hard for them to let, let go of the reins, but mm. yeah, it's tough, you know. I mean, you, you, I think you've always got to have someone in the in the ba- in the band that's quite driven. I mean, God, you know, I mean, just imagine it's it's so complicated now. I mean, to it, I mean, it's not complicated, but it's so so much more than what we did when we were in bands. I cannot imagine Jimi Hendrix like checking his Google Calendar to see if he can play a Monterey Festival. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's, it's not a thing, is it? And now, you know, they just like they've got there's TikTok, Facebook, you know, Twitter, Instagram, this, there's Twitch, there's the even 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 running our gem, it's the same. I, I'm 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 like enjoying our gem because I I look at it as like trying to break a band like so i'm like all over the socials i'm doing all the socials and just just the socials on their own is a lot of work trying to get a product out so if a band's a product rgm's a product it's a similar kind of thing in my head where you're just trying to trying to get more fans all the time over different pockets of the country for it to thrive it's 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 hard work it's hard i mean for one thing i mean i'm the same because i do some of my band socials just because you know it's easier for me to get everything out in one go yeah not because they're lazy or anything it would never be that but um but yeah sometimes i literally will have a post and i um i know it's going to take me an hour it's because i'm going to do all my socials i'm going to do all their socials i'm going to make sure i tag in everyone because i want to because mm-hmm. i want to thank them but i've got to do it properly i've got to make sure it's yeah. the right this that uh, and sometimes a post can literally take an hour and you know I do feel sorry for these bands where, you know, I think less time on social media and more time staying up until 50 o'clock in the morning with a bottle of vodka is probably going to get you better songs, you know, but you're being yeah. constantly told by, especially when you go to all these um, seminars, you know, that you must do this and capitalise on that and da, 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 da. And yeah. very rarely do I ever hear them go, and you must write a brilliant song. And that yeah. kind of, but I sound like an old geezer and I am one, but I've, I've actually watched bands, I've picked up bands where they've had one brilliant song and it's just went BBC producing, fresh on the net, yeah. BBC Radio 6, Radio 1, Red and Lee. I've seen it bloody happen. And, you know, and that's off the back of a, of, a, of, a, of a brilliant song. It does happen. But, you know, if we could all write amazing songs, I'd be the Geordie Simon Cowell. And, and nobody wants that, you know. But, you know, if we could, it's, it, it, I make it sound easy writing songs, of course, but it's not. You know, yeah. but I always say that, you know, with a lot, with, with, you know, you're one chord away from something amazing. Yeah. You just don't know what the fuck that chord is, but you are one chord away from that. You know, it's, it's, yeah, I feel, I feel for the for people in bands because it's just so much going on. It's, it must be the, the pressure, you know, must be, yeah, when we were in a band, I think all I can remember doing was getting pissed and high and just um, going to, and doing a gig. I think that's kind of what we did a lot. There's a lot of, of course, there was some organisation. Of course, you're going to yes. cut that better off because I would never say that I got high. But you know, um, yeah, it's it's tough for the bands now. I think. But what, what do you mean by pressure? By the way, what like sorry? like being in a band must be the best job in the world. What what do you mean by pressure on a band? Well, I just think you know they've got them them extra things to worry about that we yeah. didn't. But you know, my band didn't get anywhere. So. It, and I'm also I'm thinking I'm thinking as I'm speaking that you know maybe we think these are loads of pressures to them, but they're quite tech savvy. So yeah. maybe it's not. They're probably doing it on one app, and I'm going through bloody loads of them. Yeah. So and and we we'll all know you've got apps to do that, but yeah, maybe what I think is hard for them is probably quite easy for them, you know. And I'm just being an old granddad going, oh, I feel sorry for you. Well, just I, going I weren't I weren't sure if you meant like pressures from labels and that kind of stuff to get. To get the streams, to get the oh, you know what, right? To this keep is, them that is, type of thing. This is my thing about record labels, and it's true because I've done it a bunch of times now. Is they will use your streams as an excuse to tell you that you're not good enough. Mm. If they think you're good enough and you've got nothing online, they will sign you. Mm. I mean, you know, there's a few other factors that have obviously got to come into mm. play there. You know, it's nice if you've got someone working with you that they know that they can talk to and. You know, good managers do help at, at situations there, but I've managed a bunch of bands where I've just set, I've sent it out to a, a load of industry and, the, and someone's come back and went, I love this. Let's work on it together. Let's start together. All this stuff about streams is valid to an extent. And, you know, I do still get people saying to me about some of my bands, well, the streams aren't very good, but I just instantly think, well, you're thinking about that. What I want you to be doing is thinking about what we can do together mm-hmm. to make that work. So, yeah, yeah. Um, I think that's a bit of a, um, a bit of a cop out by people. Instead of saying no, they go, "Oh, well, your streams aren't that great." Oh, how many how many people do you bring to a gig? Yeah, I don't care about that, man. If you're gonna if you're gonna get a band and start working with them and pushing them and, and, and making them happen, I don't really care where they are. You know, I, I'm I, I love your music, so let's start where we are now and try and and get it moving. But 
there'll be a million people who'll disagree with me, you know, but that's just kind of the way I think. I will literally, someone can send me, and they do all the time, and I always listen to everything that gets sent, because it's going to take me, I mean, I always say people don't send us 10 songs, like, but <laughs> three songs, I can get my head around um, three songs in about six minutes. I, okay, I won't listen to the whole thing, but I'll listen to the bones of yeah. three songs. That's going to take me five minutes. And sometimes, sometimes you just hear something, you're like, shit. Yeah. This is great. And then, and I've signed so many bands of them just sending stuff into me. And um, I mean, Enjoyable Listens is about, he's doing really well at the moment. He was sort of south by, um, I'm not sure where that when this goes out, but he's just been confirmed for Glastonbury. I hope oh. it doesn't go out now. But um, we had, the, he sent me, I just love his song. I was like, I love what you do. This is, you know, I love this song. Yeah, did it. But what I hadn't done was went to see him live because I'm not bothered about, I am bothered about that, but I'm yeah. song, song, songs. I went to see him live, and I don't know, you've probably never seen him play before, but this guy is like a true kind of future islands, jumps on the bar, all the stuff I normally hate. Yeah. But he does it and he does it, he does it with like style, if, if I'm honest. Um, but yeah, um, I didn't kind of know that half of what he was doing, you know. The but uh, sorry, I, I'm, I'm rambling on a bit, oh, like, yeah. I, I keep going on one tangent, to oh, another, but yeah, I do feel sorry for the bands when people are using those numbers against them. We well, yeah. should be talking about the songs and going, all right, that song, okay, it didn't get any major radio play, but you can write a fucking song. Great, we know that. Mm. Write some more. Can you write some more? I will say that the bands, look, okay, you, I may catch I may catch a band when they've already put two or three things out and they maybe don't want to repeat it. You can to an extent these days, but not as much as you could. Um, but if I know they, they can write songs that I really like, then there's every every chance of that they can do it again. So that's what you're kind of banking on, you know. You think, okay, they've they've written these. There must be, and what you do is you kind of give them an imaginary kick up the arse, or maybe a real one, you know, and yep. you get them to kind of. So, but yeah, song, song, songs for me. But yeah, like I was saying, it's 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 just the the amount of things that are coming out, like new platforms all the time. It's just it's kind of mind boggling. I mean, where we're going to be in two years' time? What new <laughs> thing we're going to have? I wish I knew because I'd probably invent it. And, you know, <laughs> I, I wouldn't have to talk to people on podcasts and me in the bedroom. But yeah, um, but yeah, it's, it's, I think it's hard for bands. But you know, I mean, it's hard and it's not hard because I, oh, I'm, I'm quite brutally honest with my bands. When I start managing, them, I say, look, if I can't get you signed in two years, we we'll probably won't get you signed because I'm going to tell everyone about you. Mm. So you know, we're going to kind of, you know, make, we're not going to hang around here. We're going to go straight out and do it. Um, and yeah, it can be a little brutal that way because now back in the olden days when we were in bands, you never heard from a record label. So you kind of thought you still had a chance. Now you can get a bunch of emails back from record labels saying those things, you know, mm. your streams are this, your streams are that, or, or just saying it's not one for us, you know, which is basically, you know, get lost. We don't like yeah. we don't like it. So yeah, it's um it can be it can be a bit. It's, but the, you know, the music industry has always been hard, hasn't it? So I mean yeah. it's just oh, like yeah. it's like trying to play for I was going to say Newcastle United, but that was relatively easy when I was a kid. It's trying to, it's you know, it's it, it is just trying to. It's it's such a hard thing to do, but you know, we, we all know why we do it, just because we like it and we're and we're yeah. here going into work at nine o'clock in the morning. Yeah. You know what I mean? We're you know, it's, it's a balance between the two, isn't it? Really, <laughs> what, I, I sometimes go out with people and Sunday night, like, oh no, I've got to get up and work in the morning. What time are you going in? I'm, and I'm like, I'm not going in. I'm going to sit hungover and I'm going to watch whatever craps on the TV all morning. <laughs> I might do some emails in the afternoon. See you later. Yeah, yeah. I'm joking. I'm joking, of course. But yeah. Well, what what is a record deal these days? Well, the, the record deals are there's a myriad of different. It depends who's offering you something. What are they offering you? You know, are they offering you the chance to release your music on, with them, and and they're a good name and it's worth doing it? Are they offering you some money? You know, um, to to entice you or to help you? Um, are they do they are they a bigger record label where that you know there's a team and there's a, and there's a big plan behind it? Record deals can be anything really. They, they really can. It's it's tough. Um, sometimes you've got to think, okay, well, well we might work with them for a little while and then we might try and move on to something else. But I would say that um, yeah, I mean, what is a record deal? And you know, people obviously some people now put stuff out by themselves. I think that's maybe the more established artists where they'll. You know they know they've got a fan base and they, and they can go ahead and do that but yeah i mean a record deal to me if i was an 18 year old band would be the chance to you know record in great studios have 
a, g- a good team behind me, including excellent PR, people that can walk my records and, you know, Lamarck and Jack Saunders and all that. And, you know, a, a, a booking agent who can get you to play in your mind, all the, all the big festivals, that's what you kind of want, you know. I mean, and sometimes we do hit that jackpot where you'll get all those things. You know, you'll get the record deal, the booking agent, the publishing deal, and, you know, and the band are doing things. But um, as we all know, that's kind of the first rung of the, even though that looks like the top rung when you're all the way down there, it's just the first rung on the next ladder. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I mean, record deals can be anything. And the little, I'm speaking to people about my bands now. And, you know, it's they just vary so much. They just, you know, and really as a manager, what you're trying to do is you're trying to get as many people interested in as, as possible and then try to kind of, you know, secure something for the band so that they're moving forward. But, yeah, um, what is a record deal? Actually, you might be able to tell me, probably, you know. We're, yeah, we're both like, you know, what? But, you know, you see I, I, some I, just, I see people that announced they've got, they've got a record deal and then next minute they're not talking about the record deal anymore because it's not there. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you know what I mean? You so see they, the announcement and then you don't see anything from it. Well, then they may find out that the person at the sign there was a bit shit or yeah. something or some. I mean, I've had a in my time, I've had a bunch of people promise me a lot of stuff and and that didn't materialize. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, obviously the the key thing about any record deal is to get everything down and writing so that if they don't say what you you know what if they don't deliver what they promised then you can walk away from it. But sometimes it's walk away to what? There's no, there's nobody else, you know, uh, but most people, I mean, I know a bunch of people that run record labels, um, they're all in it kind of for the right reasons. I mean, the, the bad ones do get wheedled out straight away because you cannot really work with a band for very long before they realise that you're either A, shit, or B, ripping them off somehow. You That'll, that'll come, come out straight away and people, people just walk away from it. But yeah, um, it's yeah, a, a record deal can be kind of anything really, but it's you kind of you you, you kind of I guess you kind of just um you, you see what's about and you try and it's so hard for bands because it's it's, it's maybe easier for me because I'm a manager and I've seen a lot of different things to try and navigate your way through that without someone helping you is just it's like it, it yeah. it's got to be one of the hardest things in the world, especially when you're trying to just concentrate on the music. But there are a bunch of good guys out in the industry and really, really going back to what I said before, you know, if you're good, if you're really good, um, people will notice. And people notice more now than ever because it's just there on the internet in front of them. You know, back in the back in the back in the olden days when we were, you know, back when, yeah, back, <laughs> we used to have to send people send people tapes and then they would eventually get the tape and then they would play it. And that would take a while. Now you just send someone a link and go. Have you seen? Have you seen this video of them playing down at Dublin Castle? That's fucking great. And you should hear this other song that, that that I picked that I found. That's amazing. So they've got that, that, and that. And then suddenly, within like ten minutes, someone's very aware of a band, you know. So yeah, I mean, there's not very many bands that slip through the fingers of the industry anymore. People have probably, if you're in a band now, people probably have heard of your band, probably have investigated your band a little bit, and they know about you, you know. Yeah. So. It's not that we're like, you know, some sort of spy syndicate, but we are, you know, so, you know, we kind of know everything. Well, there's, there's a lot of competition out there and, you know, what, and it's quite ruthless, the music industry. It's not a secret. And, you know, keep, keeping a band once you've got, once you've got the agreement to work with them can sometimes be difficult too when you deal with other um, legal matters with bands. It, it, how, how hard is it to keep a band when you when, when you've put so much time and effort into working with somebody and um, yes, they get yes, they mate, promised yeah. they, something and, you know, they get promised. Not everything's greener on the other side uh, sometimes, is it? And bands aren't always the best at making those kind of um, educated decisions with their careers. Um, I suppose what I'm trying to say is how, how you know, how, how, how is the industry like like that in, in in the background? How how ruthless is it really? Well, it will be. It can be super ruthless. I mean, I personally have taken it upon myself over the years to say to everyone that I meet who's a manager, mm. do you have a management contract with your band? Mm. And seven times out of ten, I'll go, no, 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 we're mates, and I'll go, do you want one? I'll give you for nothing because if something you, you, did, to your you band, did, you did say that to me the other day when because I'm helping Sinclair out in yeah. Manchester managing them. That's, that's the first thing you said to me. Yeah, because you know what, and, and you know, and, and I know a bunch of people in bands that go, no, no, we don't need that. I understand your point of view there, but 
if something starts happening with a band, mm-hmm. and I've seen this because I've got access to all my band's kind of emails and, and everything. Yeah. Not that I'm not spying on everyone, but I am. But um, I have seen people when a band has started, they send the band emails saying, yeah. have you got a contract with Kelly? Now, if, I, if they have said no, they're going to really start digging in there and having a look. And from a management point of view, I think you've got to, you're putting all your time and effort and sometimes money into something. You've got to have an agreement with the band. And still to this day, I know so many people that don't have an agreement with the band. And yeah. I just think, you know, if, if I'll just pick a record label out of the air because it's probably not true or, you know, but just say something like, um, I don't know, Sony, one of the Sony labels said to the band, look, we're like you. We're not sure about your manager. You don't have a contract with them. We'd like to put one of our guys in and we'll sign you. The band are going to go, well, for, bye to their mate or whatever. So, yeah, I try and, I mean, I won't work with a band without a management contract. I've turned down some big bands um, because I won't work without um, a management contract because it's it's hard enough doing what we do anyway without, like, having zero yeah. job security. What you'll find when you work with a band is, you know, it's a kind of dizzy and highs and the death of fine lows of the Music industry, sometimes you'll get, whoa, get in, we're on Radio 1, and then you go, oh, oh, man, that happened. What you want to know as a manager is that, you know, whatever happens, you're still there. You're still kind of, you're steering the ship to an extent. But, yeah, um, it, can, it, 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 can, it can be awful for, for man- managers that I know who, and managers that I've known who've had a band and the band have just walked away, you know, because they've been up at something else. Or someone else has said, yeah, you're doing good, but he should be doing that and he should be doing that. And, yeah. you know, someone, someone could walk over me now and say, why have you not got that band, this? And, and what they don't know is that I've been bloody trying to get that band, that, but <laughs> no one's responding. Yeah. So you kind of always want that. I, I make sure all the time that I am that I do have a, a management contract with bands because it's just such a such a tricky job to do anyway and if you just literally don't know if you if in the back of you, in the back of my mind i'd just be thinking oh what's he doing ringing at half past ten the night oh, shit, i'm gonna get sacked but the you know i mean and you know there's an argument that says you know as long as you're doing everything correctly for the band then you shouldn't be worried but yeah. i live in the real world where things go wrong yeah. you know and i've and i have like it's been a bunch of bands that i've managed yeah, over the years that have done great things and there's been some really rocky times. You've got to just make sure that you're all locked in together and that, you know, it's, um, that, you know, that, and, you know, that they can't get away from you as well. That's another thing, you know, they can't. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's, are you, you are, know. That, are, you ab- are you able to tell us who you have missed out on? Mm. PL Waves was a good one. Mm. Well, they're good ones. This is a bad one. Um, I think I was, <laughs> let me drop some names, but I was in a, um, I was in a meeting um, with RCA Records about five, years ago about another band I was managing mm-hmm. and they said look there's a band in Manchester called Pale Waves that don't have a um, manager do you want to go meet them and I was like well play as them weirdly in these in these big um, offices they never seem to have like any 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 way to play any musical equipment which yeah. is a, any, any music sorry but uh, anyway I listened to them and straight I was like these are great it's dream pop I kind of love it you know that's what I love the most this is excellent um but I went up to meet them and yeah, they wanted to do a six month kind of trial. And I said, no, I've still got the email somewhere in my email, you know, but I just went, ah, you know, I, I, I kind of give them the, I give them the talk. I'll just give you. And off they went and become quite big. Well, big ish or big enough, big enough, you know, and I'm still eating. And at that time I'm still eating beans on toast. <laughs> so, you know, who's, who really knows what you should be doing because yeah. that probably would have been a good punt, you know, but um, I don't know. I, I just think that, um, yeah, trial periods and all that kind of stuff are not really for me. I'm I'm too old for a trial mm-hmm. period. Yeah, you know what I mean, I'm not I'm not I'm not I'm not I'm not auditioning to play for. You know, it's, it's I'm not trying to. It's it's not me to see if I can play for Newcastle United. You know, it's a. Yeah. I kind of think yeah, but I get that a lot from bands. But what you'll find is that <laughs> with every band, there's some guy who like where they rehearse who's been in the industry for years and he mm-hmm. and he nearly had a deal and. It's those guys I want to kill because they'll they'll say to young bands they'll go oh no don't don't never sign anything and unfortunately and this is kind of a serious point is that sometimes I'll maybe not sign a band but then a year later I'll just watch them break up and they haven't done anything yeah. and I kind of go oh man or you know, or, if, or if they've got a dadager uh, or a manager or a dadager a manager uh, yes. Yeah. I had a meeting yesterday with the dadager. They're, they're, okay. they're very good, but there's, there's definitely there's definitely a violent overtone with dadagers. Like they're like, you know, <laughs> I'm just bothered about my son, and then you're like, oh, blame me, hell. Yes, okay. Yeah, they, 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 I think they can be, but yeah, there's a, there's a lot of um, um, mama jazz and dadagers about. But you know, what else are you going to do when you're a kid now? Yeah, you know, sure. so 
I remember years and years ago when I was in the probably same thing. I think I'm a little bit older than you, Carl, but um, when I was in a band, um, and I think labour, it had to be a labour thing. It, well, it must, it must have been a labour thing, but you could actually sign on the duel and get extra money um, and they would leave you alone for two years if you were on a band. I had to take my bass guitar in yeah. North Shield somewhere and play in front of some guy that looked like, you know, probably the one in the whole team who would listen to some heavy metal mm-hmm. or something. It was his job to say that I wasn't just blagging it. Yeah. And they left me alone for two years. It's different now. This is why you need Daddy Jazz and Mama Jazz because literally when the kids leave school now and they, they, yeah. they go into the um, dole and the dole go, what's wrong with you? And, and they go, nothing. They go, all right, then Poundland for you, my lad. Yeah. And I think, no, 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 he should be fucking playing the sitar. On the, with, a, with a big doobie for the next two years. Let's see what comes out of them. But yeah, now trying to be in a band is like, it's it's tough. You can't you can't just sit around and do what you want anymore. The, the government won't let you, you know? And then, you know, what were you left with? You know, yeah. the kind of the kind of shit that's coming out. Yeah, I'm not going to mention any names of big bands because it may get back to the higher ups and the... I'm ch- and if you want. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I'm not going to tell you who I hate. I'm I have gonna, that little I'm devil gonna, on your shoulder, mate. I'm not going to tell you who I hate because I don't think I've got long enough, you know? So, yeah. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Well... You know, a, a vast of experience. Do you want to talk us through some of the bands that you're working with at the minute that you're excited about, just so we can get them a bit of promotion as yeah, well? Yeah, I mean, I took four of them over with me to um, South by Southwest. Now, I've got a stage at South by Southwest, yeah, wow. um, which was very hard to get, but um, ultimately managed to... But I did it this year with Pierce Panda, so we'll get, it's, just imagine the, imagine what Austin's like in Texas. It, it, anyway, we've we'll, we'll got two venues together. Plenty to drink and eat. Enjoy your, to, plenty of opportunities to enjoy yourself out there, I presume. Oh, yeah. So let me tell you what the venues were. One's a tequila bar. Yes. One, one's a whiskey bar. Yeah. All the best. So we so we both of the venues are connected at the back by a big um barbecue place. And that's where we had our showcase main Pierce yeah. Banner. And one of time we had, so we had 12 bands on. But yeah, the bands that I took out that I'm working with now are the institutes who've been doing, mm-hmm. I think their albums just behind me there. They've been doing tremendously well. Um, I mean, every band have got a story that I could tell you how I met them and it would take such a long time. But um, they went out there. They actually went out to, we weren't in New York with them first. I mean, what a great band. I Because I peel off early because I'm old. Mm. So we went in, we went to New Colossus Festival first. Um, I'm peeling off at half 10 because I'm, I'm not sitting out at 50 o'clock in the morning, you know. <laughs> but every single morning when I woke up, at about, it was them that were waking me up. They were coming in. At 7.30 in the morning. And I was like, are you just getting in? And, like, and they did that. So we were, I took the Institute of New York to New Colossus Festival. Then we went to South by Southwest for a week. And then they went on LA and did a gig in LA. But they're a great band. So, I mean, they're, they've they just had a bunch of festivals um, announced. Um, mm. Shine On was one. Come a calling. And what is another one? But, um, yeah, they're great. They, they won't mind me saying, you know, they're not. They're a little bit older, so they're in their 30s. But... The songs was what I attracted the band. Basically, the lead singer was um, sending me stuff on his own. And one day I was on the train up to London. And I just picked up the phone and went, have you got a band? What, what, what do you, all these songs are great that you're sending me. And it turned out he did have a band. And we've been, I've been working with them for a couple of years. But yeah, the, 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 the songwriting is just so good. you know. Um, and they're, they're on 42's records. They're doing, they're doing great. And another band that I'm working with that I took with South by South, Jekyll. Mm. Oh, uh, Weirdly, the story with Jekyll is that yeah, but I started managing them just before The Great Escape about four years ago. And I said, look, I can get you on The Great Escape. It's going to be a rubbish slot. You'll have to sleep in my basement. But do you want to come and do it? And they went, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what happened and what always happens is other bands dropped out. So they didn't play one slot. They played three or four at The Great Escape. And then one of them, Simon Williams from Fierce Panda, walked in. And he was like, these are great. And then he, that was at the night time. And he came back in the morning to the place where I was putting on my gig at The Great Escape. And he went, who are that band, Kelly? Tell me about them. I said, just wait there. They're on in 10 minutes in here again. Mm-hmm. You watch them. And we went outside. He went, yeah, yeah, I'll sign them to Face Panda. Yeah. Literally three weeks, boom. They mm-hmm. were, they were. So that was, but, um, and then they just did Radio One, Radio One, made a veil. Obviously, the pandemic took the steam out of a lot of things. We were just about to fly to South by Southwest with them two years ago. And we all know what happened. Yeah. So they were like going like that. And now they're kind of going like that. And I've got a couple of record labels talking to them now um, because we've we've kind of moved um, not away from Pierce Panda. We've just kind of, we've just kind of moved because I've now got another band on Pierce Panda, which is Enjoyable Lessons, the guy I was telling you about. And again, you know, to my 
absolute horror. I signed them without seeing them live and like <laughs> 70% of his singers live and I had no idea. But he's doing great also. He's a, he's a bass panda. I think I tell you, he's, he's just been confirmed for Glastonbury. Um, and yeah, he did, he did, uh, he did Folks Wales, did Great Scave, you know, all those things. Um, so he's really, really good. One man show will literally plug his back and track on a phone into the PA, yeah. which sounds rubbish saying it, <laughs> and then just bl- go off and blow people's heads off. Like, literally, we were at the Great Escape, and um, he likes to jump on things. You know, you, you get, you'll get out in the crowd and see how, you know, you'll ask the um, sound man for an extra long lead, like on purpose, so that you can get out. And he was on the he was on the bar and at the Black Line and um, Great Escape, and it was his second gig at the Black Line. He'd been on the bar the first time, but there was a new bouncer in there who didn't know. And he came running through <laughs> and pulled him off the pulled him off the um, thing. But because um, enjoyable listens, Luke is so charming. Within about ten minutes, he had the he had the bouncer in, in the palm of his hands. He was like, he's like I, he's like I forgive you. You are my friend now. And and the guy was just like trying to be violent as bouncers <laughs> do, but he just charmed the pants off him. So that's the third one. Um, the fourth one is um, um, family jewels. I've been managing for ages. Like over five years now, and um, the story about those guys was um, I used to put on loads of gigs around the country and just go to loads of different places and just put bands on and see who turned up to see what you know what what what, what possibly I might be able to see. And I remember them sending me something, and I was like, "Are you sure you're not signed? This sounds really professional." Forgot about it. Then I went over to Bristol where they're from, and they played, and I forgot all about them. And I was like, "Crap, it's that band! I can't believe it!" And yeah, I've been managing those guys for about five years, but they're really, I mean, Lamac keep saying nice things about them they're doing super in the last band that i managed is a band called no and the loners who have just signed to marshall records mm. um and they're with marshall live ages this 17 well there were 16 when i met them 16 year old punks um we've got basically what i was saying to you before we've got i just thought right okay if i can get these on a radio i can probably get them a deal and it sounds easy when you say it but we did it. We got them on the radio one. They're actually on their own steam. They went out and met Steve yeah. Lamarck just off the, off their own <laughs> back, and he he kind of took them straight away. And yeah, we signed them to Marshall not so long ago, so they're busy in the studio at the moment. So the band have signed to Marshall, and we all know you know how good Marshall are doing with Nova Twins. So it's going to be interesting to see where you know where Marshall take um, Noir and the Loners, but. I should have had them at the Great Escape, but they were recording. Um, mm. But hopefully, because um, they're 17 now, so we're trying to get the record out while they're still 17. Not because we're weird or anything, just because, you know, <laughs> it, it's, kind, it's kind of, it just sounds better than 18 in, in a strange way. But yeah, um, that'll be interesting to see what, what happens with the Marshall guys. But yeah. again, so those are the, like I say, those are the five bands that I look after. But I'm yeah. always, I am literally talking to bands all the time, yeah. trying to kind of sign bands. Sometimes it doesn't work out, you know, but, or, you know, sometimes it want something else that I can't give them, which is, you know, normally money. But, uh, but, but yeah. yeah, I'm always, always looking for bands. So it's like, you know, I do, and I'll say it again to you, you know, I just say to people, send me stuff, yeah. send me some songs. I, I really, really like that. You know, I'm not, I'm not one of them guys that goes, no, 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 don't. And, yeah. you know, I, I kind of hate the thing sometimes when I see people go, oh, band sent me an email. And, you know, they didn't even give me, didn't spell my name properly. I'm like, fuck that, man. What does it sound like? Mm. You know what I mean? You get, yeah, I am the opposite of a lot of people where I just go, look, just send me stuff because I thrive on finding just things that, that maybe people haven't picked up on, but, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll look at it all from all angles. And if, if I think it's good, I'll, I'll kind of, I'll kind of jump in with both feet, I guess, you know. So you're still loving it after all these years, mate, aren't you? Well, it's either that or drive a van, you know what I mean? No, I'm joking. <laughs> but, yeah, it's, you know what, it's it's probably the same, same as you. you. You start playing when you, I mean, yeah. I, I didn't pick up the title at 17, but you do that for, you know, maybe 20 years and then you just, you move on because, yeah, you do love music and you love, I mean, I am one of these weird guys that if I maybe find a band, I'll, I'll be wanting to ring them up at four o'clock in the morning. Yeah. But, and you know, you can't because you'd probably get put in jail for that. <laughs> but, you know, I am literally like this going, oh, man, I want it, oh, man. And I, and I get so excited because I'm just, like, really, you know, wanting, wanting, wanting to work with a band. So I still get that. And and with the number of bands I've worked with, you know, I've seen them go from, like, like zero mm. to headlining, you know, Redden and Leeds, BBC and Justin Stages, or, yeah. or doing this or doing that, you know, or playing this festival, that festival. And the thing with what we do is, you know, the, I think the longer you stick around, 
the more people you get to know, of course. And that can only help you because, you know, you when I get a band now, I go, OK, I think they might like it or I think they might like it. You know, they might tell me to F off, you know, oh, this, what, are you mental? But, you know, it, you, you kind of do know. And, you, you know, you know yourself, like you see lots of people coming in the industry and then they leave because it's yeah. really tough and it's hard to make a living from it. But, yeah, um, I don't think there's anything else I could do now. I'm, I'm too old to... I'm probably not too old to work in Poundland, as we um, discussed earlier. But, yeah, when I met my wife years and years ago, she knew it was kind of music. You know, it just says, you know, which one would you pick? And I'm like, um, yeah. So, I, actually, that was the answer I gave her. I couldn't give her an answer, you know. But, yeah, that's um, – I think we, we do. We just we do it because we love it. And also, it's, it's, it's good fun. It is good fun. It can be yeah. mental. Just when you think you've seen everything in the music industry, and I probably haven't seen – as much as loads of people I know, but just when you think you've seen it all, you just go, "What? What? What's that? Really? Blame me! It just it's, it's, it happens to me on a regular basis." But it's funny; it keeps it kind of um, it keeps it really super interesting. What, but as what, I say, what is it about music that just you know, just you can't leave? You just can't let it go. Well, it's, it is that. that yeah, it's I mean, powerful it's there, isn't there? Well, yeah, you know, I mean, I still play. Um, unbeknown to lots of people, I put records out um, under pseudonyms. I actually got like okay. BBC News um, record of record of the week at a oh. BBC News station. I won't tell you who who the station was, but they thought it was a proper band. But it wasn't just me because I still write songs. But um, yeah, no, it's it's that it's finding a band, finding a song that you can't stop listening to and that you absolutely love, and then you're like, you know, you're you're super excited about pushing it out to other people. You know, and, and super excited about helping the band get the way, get the places that they. When you start a band, you don't know about South by Southwest. You don't know what the Great Escape is. You've got no clue. These are things that they're not even on your bucket list because you didn't even know they're there. But to be able to get a band, to I mean, the bands that I took to South by Southwest this year will tell you easily that you know that was something that they'll never forget for the rest of their lives. I go every year, so it's not. It's still super exciting. But you know, getting bands into that situation. And you know, getting other people interested in your bands, getting it's 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 something that I totally enjoy doing and something that um yeah, I don't think I'll ever get I don't think I'll ever get bored of that, you know. But yeah, and also the, the flip side is you know, the after parties and the hanging yeah. around and, and yeah. having 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 a good time and a, and a couple of shandies, you know. Yeah. It's um it's a it's a good in the backstage passes, they're not bad. And yeah. the free in the in the free rider, you know what I mean? And the yes. yeah. So it's got, I think it's got everything that you want in there, hasn't it? He's got the music which you love, and it's got the other things that you like. And he has a weird one. Um, someone give me, um, t- someone give me a corporate box in Newcastle United last yeah. week because I helped them out doing something. It was a guy from Soccer Six who says, oh, "Do you yeah. want to go watch the last match, Newcastle United versus Arsenal, in a corporate box, free food, free course meal, wait, has given you like any drink you want, and also Newcastle won two 0 which I've never seen for <laughs> donkey's years." Um, wow, that's just out of the blue. That just, I was like, whoa, you know, this is if, if it's just for the Newcastle United tickets, I'm staying in the um, music there industry. That's it, you know, because you know, because New, Newcastle are definitely going to win everything next year. So, <laughs> but, you know, we'll, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's an absolute pleasure to spend this time with you, Kelly. And you're, you're um, the, the enthusiasm still for the music industry after all these years is it, it, it's just nice to. It's nice to see, mate. It's nice to know people are out there just in it for the music. Um, you know, you've, you've hit the holy grail. You're making a living from the music industry and enjoying yourself. Yeah. Um, you know, mate, it, thanks for all the work that you do within the music industry is what I'd say. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, and you know what? I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure we'll catch up soon. You're doing I, tram lines. You're, you're doing tram lines two days before yes. I am at the same venue. Frog and Parrot, yeah. Thursday and Friday. Uh, I'm announcing uh, it, when this podcast comes out, my lineup will be announced. Right. Okay. Yeah, so I'll see you. I'll see you on the Saturday when you're super double hungover from the two yes, days before. Yes. What, what could be better? Yeah, mate. Yeah, mate. I can't wait for Tramline's fringe down at the Frog and Parrot, mate. Yeah, I'll yeah, be definitely right. putting a pint in front of you. It'll be lovely to see you face to face again, just being out and about, yeah. mate. Thanks for your time today. Cheers. All right, mate. I'll speak to you soon. Cheers, pal. All Thank right. you. See you later. Bye. Is that all right, mate? Is that all good? That's fine. Yeah, mate. Yeah. That's cool. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cheers, Blame pal. You, you got much on today? Yeah, I've got. Oh well, I'm supposed to go to Newcastle tomorrow for a um, for a festival. Yeah, well, I'm supposed to go and see my brother, but there's an unsigned festival on, and it's right down where Sam Fender works and all that. So you know, no shields where I'm from. It's just t- it used to be when I had a guitar, people used to chase me around and try and kick my head yeah. in. Now there's like, um, I, and I actually had to leave, not leave, but go 
up in Newcastle where the students were to find my bandmates because there's no one in North yeah. Shields who had a um, band. But anyway, I'm blabbing on again. But we're supposed to go to that festival tomorrow. But enjoy the listeners is playing at the Finsbury tonight. Ah, okay. And I really want to go, but I don't want to be hungover for tomorrow. And I know I'll go. I'm going to be hungover for tomorrow. But then <laughs> someone, someone just paid me for something. And I'm like, oh, fuck, now I've got money. Shit. So I feel well, like I got about... I sent you a couple of emails earlier as well. We've just put out that uh, new recommends post with two of them bands that you sent me. Well, uh, yeah, that's that song, Honeycomb Sunshine. I yeah. wrote that song. I oh, wrote that. oh, is that you? That's kind of might be me. Oh, okay. Uh, right, okay. Yeah. Oh, I, 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 I haven't read the review myself yet, but it's public. What's it say? Yeah, it just, it just says that's great. And, you know, have a good time. Did you like it? Oh, brilliant. Well, he's like, oh, he's an absolute fucking genius. I'm like, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know, I should stop. It was in the lockdown, you know, in the lockdown when everyone was, I was like, I haven't wrote the song for years. So I got a bunch of like, um, like, like oh, new, re- new, new recording software, and I went right. Yeah. I'll start. Yeah, and then I just kind of, and now, every now, now and again, when I've got a whole day to myself and the kids are out, I'll go, I'll bring all the equipment out and I'll, and I'll write something. But yeah. I should really stop putting it online because it's, um, I'm starting to take the piss really a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I should, I should pack that in. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, no, thank you for that because you also reviewed yes. the OPD, the Office of Public Personal Development, who are on my label in the same thing. So awesome. that's great as well, man. Yeah. Yeah, man. Let, let's keep in touch. Let's keep doing this thing and really appreciate your oh. time, mate. And hope, All right, mate. I'll see, I'll see hope you, you don't get too long over. Oh, God, let's see. <laughs> Good, see Paul. Later, Have a good day, Paul. All right. Bye, bye.